Okay. Hi, it's Caroline Quibell with uh, Roaming RV, and today we're going to talk, uh, let's talk about RVing. And if you can hear me, um, I hope you can hear me. I have no way of testing. Anyway, today what I want to talk about, I did a video a while ago about um, regrets and people who have always wanted to um, live a dream of some sort, whether it's uh, full-time RVing or something else, it doesn't really matter. They have dreams and they've, for whatever reason, they put them off and they don't fulfill those dreams. And then there's others who um, do fulfill their dreams and um, regret that they didn't start sooner or regret that they didn't make that choice sooner. And I really want to share with you, um, I've been getting a lot of emails from people and I find it heartbreaking sometimes um, that people have dreams and they, put, they have so much fear um, and they're scared of trying to fulfill those dreams. And I want to talk about some of them. Um, one of the people that I, one woman, um, this is just a list of people who I've been getting emails and I just want to share some of their stories with you and um, see what you think. Okay. Uh, I see RV lady on there. Hi there. Want to open, jump on the seat? You're more than welcome. Just jump on. Um, we're talking about regrets and dreams and people fulfilling their dream, whether it's full-time RVing or whether it's anything else, it doesn't really matter. And I've received a number of emails and um, about from people who have these dreams. And I'm just going to share these for, with you. The first one is a woman, she's over 70 years old and she's now just considering full-time RVing and she's doing research, the research and she's asking questions. And I think it's phenomenal. She's over 70 and she's going to go out on the road by herself. And if she can do it, I think anybody can. I'm, I was just thrilled and all I could do was encourage her. Another woman whose husband doesn't want to travel is trying to make a decision um, whether she should head out on her own. And, you know, that's a tough, tough decision to have to make. You're a couple and the reason, part of the reason why you're a couple is to do things together and share your dreams and such like that. And maybe that's being just a little bit too fluffy, I don't know, but this woman is trying to decide whether she should give up her dream of full-time RVing um, or stay at home. And part of her research and everything, she's trying to figure out what kind of RV she wants, uh, if she should buy one, and she's retired and trying to convince her husband maybe if she goes out on the road that maybe he'll join her periodically. So that's a really tough decision for her. And obviously, um, you know, that's going to impact her her family life and her home life. So, And another one, um, I spoke to a man who he used to full-time RV. He full-time RV'd for five years and he desperately, and these are his words, he desperately wants to do it again. However, when he full-timed, his RV kept breaking down all the time. I guess he sat on the side of the road numerous on numerous occasions with all the traffic just flying past him. And he said that because of all this, the stress level was through the roof, up high, and um, he quit. He Just like that, the stress level quit. And when I spoke with him, I suggested that maybe, uh, and I realize this is very simple, but maybe, if his RV had been more well maintained, or he could have done some preventative maintenance on his RV, or um, you know something to prevent all these breakdowns, that his stress level wouldn't have been through the roof, and maybe he could have slowed down a little bit and then actually enjoyed the RV lifestyle. He says he desperately wants to get back out, but I think he's scared. And how unfortunate, extremely unfortunate. So I hope 
that he realizes that there must be some underlying issues going on there for him to have quit because of his RV kept breaking down. That to me does make sense. But anyway, um, another fellow uh, who's on his own, uh, recently separated, um, has retired and decided to full time and is anticipating getting out and having a new life. He's he's really excited. He's doing the research. He's asking all kinds of questions. And, you know, good for him. Go for it. Um, and another, I mean, these are just, I've got, oh gosh, like 10 or 12 people. And these are just people that within the last month that have emailed me or phoned or asked questions about full-time RVing and telling me their stories. This is a woman who desperately, and these are words that they use again, uh, she desperately wants to full-time and she wants to meet people, but her health is preventing her from doing it. Um, she has had an RV. She was lending it out to her friends um, because she didn't feel that she could use it, but at least someone was using the RV. Um, and she says her health was preventing her. But then she also admitted, which I thought was kind of interesting, that she's in a trap and feels that it's probably self-imposed. So maybe, um, you know, maybe there's a way of her doing this. Maybe she's putting stumbling blocks in front of herself and doesn't need to. Um, sometimes we do that. We create problems. We say that we want to do something or, and it doesn't have to be RVing. It could be anything. And we say we really want to do something and it's really important to us. But every time we turn around, we've got stumbling blocks right in front of us and we stop ourselves. We prevent ourselves from doing these things. Here's a, a young girl. She's a student in uh, British Columbia, actually. She's fairly local to me and who wants to live in her RV and asked me about how to fill the water tanks, um, how to do hookups, and needs help on learning. And so this is somebody at the totally other end of the spectrum instead of retired and such. This is a young girl. She's in her early 20s is a student and wants to have the uh, freedom with the RV and I, good for her. And I, you know, pointed her in a few directions to ask, answer questions or, you know, it, things like that. And I thought that was really interesting. Let's see, I have a fellow who has never RV'd, but he wants to see North America. And, but he's really worried about traveling alone. Now, just, I know we get a lot of questions and a lot of women are worried about traveling alone, but men are also worried about traveling alone. They're concerned. And what he thinks uh, is that campgrounds are filled with couples and he hesitates to um, do this because he thinks everybody, it's all couples related and not for single people. If he only knew the thousands of solo RVers that are out there on the road, um, I think he would be amazed and maybe he would be a little bit more reassured as to um, what the potential is. You know, just because you're single doesn't have to, you don't have to stop doing this. Um, the last one I just uh, made a note of, a woman who wants to follow her dream and she's trying to make the decision. So her dream, she says, is being a full-time RVer. She, this is an American lady, and I think she's on the East Coast. And she's trying to make the decision. And I think once again, we uh, put stumbling blocks in front of ourselves. She's trying to make the decision, but you wonder what is, what are the things that are preventing her from doing that? Um, uh, yeah, uh, it's it's interesting. Um, you know, there's a lot of people I've, there's a lot of people who we got here, show colors, come on in. We got somebody here. Hi there. Hi there. Hi, <laughs> welcome. 
<laughs> Let me put some light on myself. There yeah, do, go. please. I like to see you. <laughs> <laughs> um, how yeah. are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. very good. Thanks. Yeah. I just been you reading these. Of, you get a lot of emails from your the people who watch. I do. Uh, I really do. That's nice. Yeah. It is nice, and I really enjoy getting them, um, mm -hmm. and I do my best to try and respond or direct them in the direction that they need, but I find it heartbreaking yeah. with some of these people that, you know, they really want to do something or live their dream, and they they don't seem to be able to do it. That what is unfortunate. Think? I heard you talking about, you know, let me get a microphone on. I heard you talking about um, uh, the woman and her husband, and she wants to go and he doesn't. Yep. Yeah. She <laughs> you know what? That's what I told her, too. <laughs> I think she is going to. You know what? I, uh, life waits for no one. We're all going to die, and um, you might as well enjoy yourself while Absolutely. you're here. And it kind of makes me crazy when people say, oh, I'd love to do that, but, mm -hmm. well, there's no time like the present. You know, you might as well do it. Now, you should do it with some kind of exactly. you know, yeah. thought to it. Um, a lot of people... Um, that's better. A lot of people um, ask uh, on our show um, for the other person who's watching. I've got. Here. <laughs> you know, no, it's just the two I've of us got more. I've got three more on the side that you can't see. Yeah, I've got. Oh, you do? Three more. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, the the um, interest from um, people, mm -hmm. young people. I yeah. think is fascinating. Uh, we had a gal on um, uh, for you, so your audience knows. Yes. I'm RV Lady, and I have a, um, mm -hmm. a Sunday chat for I'm which I keep out. signing up for, yes. and then I forget at the last minute. So I go back oh, and yes. I watch it <laughs> later. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, we had a gal on there last Sunday, and she spoke about, you know, what does she want to get? And it's it's kind of a good idea for people to mm -hmm. talk to or at least watch other people's um, uh, videos and or come to chats like this to oh, ask sorry. those questions because I, I know from my experience – had all those questions me too. at one me time, too. and yeah. yeah, and mm -hmm. I answered them for myself. You know, some help I found on YouTube, but for the most part, I got to tell you, when I error. first started, there was and no YouTube. <laughs> there was no internet. <laughs> oh, oh! How well, right now I'm not. Um, I've been back in a house for oh, three okay. years, but I have a big for sale sign on my front yard. And we're going full timey again this summer, yeah. but I travel. I traveled nice. full timed um, for oh most of 2001 to 2012, and then in the 90s. Yeah, um, I did a lot of extensive traveling in the 90s. Also, did you um, just stay? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, did you? I stay did in Canada, Canada did U.S., Mexico. The US? Um, and then I left the rig in um, the States and then we headed, um, I headed down into Central America for a few months. Uh, but my RVing has uh, done mostly nice. in the United States and Mexico, some in Canada, but yeah, mostly south of here. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, I'm currently in Florida. And for your audience, I'm okay. from uh, San Diego, California, and, um, you know, I will call that my mm -hmm. home base, but I live full time in an RV, and uh, it's 26 okay. foot, it's nice. a Winnebago Brave, and then I 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I have a tow vehicle um, that really makes my life much easier because I don't have to drive around in the right. RV or I don't have to overstock. Can, I can go to the store whenever I want to go. Anywhere. And plus, it's anywhere. Suzuki. Can I, I can go anywhere um, yeah, I want to go. About when you're on your own, of right? Of course. You're traveling by yourself. Um, and I, yes. this seems to be one yes. of the major things I get asked recently, and not just women, but men. How do you feel? Are you, I'm, I'm assuming you're comfortable traveling by yourself. Do you find it a challenge or yes. um, mm -hmm. do you find that myself, when I travel by myself, I tend to meet people a lot easier. If you're traveling as a couple or a group, mm -hmm. you tend to stay very insular. Um, I love mm -hmm. traveling alone. Uh, not yeah. that I don't want to, tra not that I don't, Right. Mind traveling I with somebody, too. but I have no problem traveling alone. But what kind of recommendations would you make to someone who, say a female, uh, who is worried about safety and concerned uh -huh. about safety? What would you recommend? Uh -huh. Well, I have been doing this okay. since April of 2015. Mm -hmm. Okay, so not quite a year. Now, before I became a full-time RVer, I spent my extracurricular time okay. uh, tent camping and, and at some point decided to get off the ground. For mm -hmm. those years, and I did it for years, probably most of my life, and um, still the question was even way back when, was, right. um, you know, are, aren't you afraid? Aren't you afraid to, you know, no. Um, I have never run into any trouble uh, in my mm -hmm. 40 years of exploring. Um, I haven't, um, I haven't run into any situation that I felt um, threatened in any way. Um, I do, for the most part, stay at RV parks. Absolutely. And it's very safe in an RV park. You know, How much not traveling do you actually do? <laughs> I, um, hold on, let me get rid of this. <laughs> Maybe it's Wait, Let me find out. <laughs> Hello. How much, first of all, how much traveling do you actually do? Uh, here. George. George. Hey, right now I'm on a chat. Hi. Uh, right now I'm on a chat. So and, and I'm live. So I'm going to hang up. But I just wanted to take your call and let you know that I'm just going to hang up. <laughs> Goodbye, George. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks for calling. Okay, we'll do. Bye. <laughs> yeah, just picking up the phone. Today. How much oh, traveling do you actually do? Um. Uh, let's see. I have mm -hmm. uh, in the time that I've been on the road. So since April that's my 18th, birthday or April 11th. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. of, oh, April 11th of um, 2015. I've done the the okay. West Coast. I went up into Oregon, and um, uh, and just you know, I, sometimes I would drive mm -hmm. 10 miles. Sometimes I would drive 50 miles between locations. Uh, it didn't make any difference to me. I didn't do a lot of boondocking. As a Californian, you'd think, okay. yeah, you've done that like 100 times. I'd never done that. Uh, the only time I'd ever gone, gone to uh, Northern California mm -hmm. is when I either flew over it, uh, went to San Francisco, or was on the major okay. thoroughfare yep. that takes you up into Oregon and Washington. And... Uh, that was about it. Mm -hmm. I'd never gone to the Redwoods or anything right. like that. And it's just magnificent. Um, I then came down, uh, mm -hmm. back down to San Diego, which is where I'm, from, where I'm from. And I had to take care of some business. And then I took off across country, um, stayed in Phoenix for a while, stayed in Texas for a while. Um, I was down and in nice area. Uh, Corpus Christi, Padre Island. 
yeah, in Texas. And then I was actually going to go to mm -hmm. uh, the Yucatan in Mexico and um, the political climate okay. just wasn't satisfactory when I wanted to go over. I wish I would have gone now, but um, uh, I ended up <laughs> flipping a coin to decide whether or not I was going to, literally, uh, whether yeah. I was going to go back to California or go ahead and go east and come to Florida. Mm -hmm. So Florida won. And so, so you actually am, have been on the road Florida. quite a bit during the, it's less than a year. So what kind of yes. precautions do you take yes. um, to in consideration to for parking? You say you haven't done much boondocking, so you've been in campgrounds yeah. for the most part. Do you use, um, do you do oh, right. Walmarts or anything similar to that at all? Well, let me think. I have done a Walmart mm -hmm. maybe twice, okay? And the first one mm -hmm. was in Rockland, California. And no knock, sooner knock, did knock. I get to sleep <laughs> than knock, knock, knock on the door. And it's the local police right. saying they have right. an ordinance and you can't do this. You can't, you can't, mm -hmm. over, you can't boondock at uh, Walmart. Now, as a respectful and traveler, asked. I had gone into the Walmart. Mm -hmm and asked the manager. And uh, the manager said, yeah, sure, yeah, Walmart has a policy that we like it when blah, 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 except the police right. in Walmart seem to be yeah. in conflict as to, um, yeah. you know, what's allowable. And uh, so <laughs> that was my first okay. experience in <laughs> boondocking. <laughs> Walmart, I got thrown out. <laughs> so um, did you be, did you yeah. try it again somewhere uh, else? But I, I think I did. It seems to me that I have overnighted at a Walmart. Um, I would have to go back into see all of my videos did. to actually see. And yeah, um, and for your audience, I make videos like one a day or one every other day, and I put those things on YouTube. And um, what it is is my memory. That's your diary. That is basically what I'm creating. Right. Is right. yeah, it's my video diary. <laughs> and when you I'm can look old, back I'm on old it. and I can't do anything, <laughs> I'm just gonna sit and watch them. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to sit and watch them. And, you know, so if I have timers, it'll be like, oh, who's that? Oh, she's having fun. So, <laughs> is, uh, mm -hmm. You know, everything um, uh, really is, it is. Uh, safe. Uh, I don't, uh, I, yeah, I do not have any, um, any problems at all. And if you feel the least bit threatened, I find personally, and I've away. done a lot of traveling all over the world. And I find I trust my instincts. If, and if I'm in a situation oh, where the too. hair starts raising on the back of my head, I listen to it, whether it's right or wrong, it doesn't matter. I listen to it. And yeah, well, mm -hmm. and, and I'm passing through, so it's not like if I, you know, hurt right. somebody's feelings or whatever that, you know, they're right. following me in my house and whatever, but, um, you know, it's, it is, um, yeah, I just tell people, you know, oh, you're making me feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. or this is my personal space or, you okay. know, but I've, I've had to do that one time and, um, yeah. Uh, a guy who was actually traveling with his wife was uh, basically flirting oh, with me every time I walked out <laughs> of my RV. <laughs> uh, it's yeah. one that I would you know, prefer not I've having. told people, but, um, um, because I've backpacked also, I backpacked all through Central America on my own and with my kids. I took my kids down there. But what I've also said, like, use your head. I live in British Columbia. I used yeah. to live in Vancouver. I don't wander downtown Vancouver by myself at two o'clock in the morning. Now, why would I do that anywhere else? You know, use your head. 
uh, where you're right. parking, right. Um, who you're talking yeah. to, who you invite into your, not necessarily your RV, but into your space, you know, without giving out too much information, yeah. you know, just use your head. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think that that's really vital that um, people call on mm -hmm. their sixth right. sense or their common sense and uh, not put themselves in a situation mm -hmm. that, you know, can be perilous. You know, you don't pick up hitchhikers, uh, even though it's really tempting. Uh, you know, you see mm -hmm. these travelers and they're backpackers and you know, they're walking, they just want to get to the next um, exit yeah. or to the, you know, whatever it is. And it's tempting to stranger. pick them up. But I'm picking up a complete stranger. In your home. putting them exactly. in my house. Yeah. And I'm occupied yeah, not a good situation. driving. So, yeah, it's, that would not be the correct thing to do. And even if you've met somebody mm -hmm. and you've gotten to know them not, for a few days. I agree. It's still I not totally a agree. good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but but traveling mm -hmm. this way is so rewarding in just every possible way. You know, it's it's so rewarding. But again, for people who want mm -hmm. to do this or are doing it, it's vital that you have a backup plan. Backup plan. And then you have a backup plan to your backup plan, <laughs> and then you have a backup plan. Or you like me and just plan. wing it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've done that too. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, it, it may seem on my videos like I'm winging it, but in actuality, you know, it is something that, you know, I have a pretty good idea of what right. I'm doing. I've traveled Most extensively. Most of us do. In Most of life. us have a plan. And so, and, you know, yeah. um, another yeah. thing that is discussed a lot, of course, is budget, how much it costs to RV. It does. Yeah. yeah but, um, you know, it also depends on how you're traveling, what you're traveling in, whether, you know, I had a really good discussion with yes. somebody um, a couple of years ago. They were parked in British Columbia in an RV park. And and uh, there was another person there who just desperately wanted to get out on the road. But um, her husband was waiting until they could have – enough money to buy themselves a big fancy motorhome. And this fellow that we were talking to right. gave her the advice that why do you need a big fancy motorhome? And she said, I don't, but my husband does. Yeah. And he said, I like they right. were in a big fancy motorhome. He said, but you know what? If all I had was a hundred bucks, that's what I would be traveling in, in a unit with a hundred dollars. You don't have to mm -hmm. have the best of everything. Mm -hmm. No. And as a matter of fact, for people who mm -hmm. are not used to driving mm -hmm. such large vehicles like myself, um, you would probably um, be better off getting what I call a practice RV. Now, yes, I had uh, prior mm -hmm. to when I initially left last okay. year, I had a class C. And um, I literally uh, i don't know in, in canada if you have these but at gas stations filling stations they have yes. the yellow <laughs> post so you don't hit the, the gas tank well i was uh in a tight 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 situation a guy jumped out from his tow truck and said i'll you know i'll i'll get you to go buy it and he was giving me directions i was right just gonna say that was your first mistake <laughs> yes yes and generally it is. Just do it. You know how to do something, <laughs> you know, just do it yourself. Um, but it ended, it oh, no. practically tore off the entire um, yeah. driver's side back end of my RV. And I was leaving the following day <laughs> oh, to no. begin my life as a full-time <laughs> RVer. Oh, yes. Um, and it ended up that um and there's videos mm -hmm. of it I'm, I'm on my channel um but uh basically what i did was um 
you know, got fiberglass fixer upper mm -hmm. and, and, oh, and, did it and fiberglass the whole yeah. thing and basically let it. Yeah. Uh, Can I interrupt I you just for one second? Sorry. And, um, I just see that we've yeah. got Joe and Francis right. and I see Rob from RV travel, Buddy is on. Um, if anybody wants to jump on one of the seats, please feel free. We don't have to, to um, monopolize the conversation. Would love to have anybody join. So jump on one of the seats if you're interested. Sorry, carry on. So you put. That's all right. And if there are more people who want to yes, come in, there are. there's two seats available. Um, if there's like three fine. No, uh, we're people enjoying who want to come in, I'm happy talking to with you. So you did okay. the fiberglass thing. The, um, yeah. So I, did, I, I fixed it myself. Now, I have to preface this by saying my first RV was a 1994 Coachman mm -hmm. Santerra. It was um, 28 feet long, and um, I bought cool. it for $500. Okay, yeah. I, uh, when I went out and inspected this RV, it had yeah. a delamination. That means that yeah. the side is separating, you know, it's like this and it's kind of wavy. It had delamination, which mm -hmm. told me that the roof needed to be mm -hmm. redone. I did, redid the roof. Um, the interior was in very good shape. The um, It needed new tires and the guy said that the transmission, okay. uh, that it needed a new transmission. Well, I got under there and pulled the transmission pan off and looked around and put a magnet in and was looking for pieces and there were no pieces. And generally, if there are no pieces, then it's not the gear. It's mm -hmm. The problem isn't the gear themselves. What it ended up being was the converter and some seals that I drove it until those things really went. And then I took it into a shop and had them fix it. They threw in a converter and redid mm -hmm. the seals and they did that in one day uh, because they knew it was my home. Um, but, you know, you can get into <laughs> RVing, my point being, you can get into RVing oh, very. in a really expensive way. My first RV, you know, yes, you can go out. Yeah, my RV, the first RV I that I traveled like all I, over Canada, I, United States and Mexico was a 1951 western flyer bus and it was converted into a motorhome it had been used it yeah. was half truck and half bus it was used in the 50s for the military uh -huh. in northern canada and it had i don't know 16 seats in the front nice. and the back was where the luggage with all uh -huh. their gear and stuff and that was what i, I lived in and yeah. traveled in yeah. for well over a year i loved it i think we paid five thousand yeah, dollars for it. I had, yeah, I had a uh, Land Rover, and uh, you know I bought it. Um, I bought it used, and that was my, you know, yeah. go go camping vehicle, and um, I would take off, and it had four wheel drive, and I mm -hmm. didn't really care what happened to it. So, if, you know, if matter. I brushed against a rock yeah. or whatever, I wasn't crying. And I took that same philosophy mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. uh, RVing. And, uh, you know, and that way, if you go out and spend $250,000 on an RV, the guy who is next to me spent $250,000 mm -hmm. on his RV. Uh, and interestingly enough, he's got to pay twenty thousand dollars in taxes and and uh, right. Department of Motor Vehicle fees that he ah. that he does not oh. have. But so he's got a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar <laughs> RV, and he can't he he doesn't he can't Hi, afford Francis. to register it. Um, oh, and, and I see Rob's coming Francis, on. How are you? <laughs> Hold on one sec. Come on in, Rob. Hi, it's raining here, so it's Francis, been chilly today. Welcome. Me? Uh, where are you? Uh, He's in Oregon, in South Carolina yeah. area. Oh, I thought you were in Oregon. Oh, South Carolina. Okay. Yeah. Francis, um, where are you? 
an RV travel buddy. Francis, can you hear us? Yeah, he's in he's in the Carolina. He's in South oh, Carolina, okay. North or South Carolina. And Who yeah, is um, hey, how are you? RV travel buddy. This. Hi, how are you? Yeah, we've uh, crossed paths with a uh, RV lady, but uh, we've never really talked. <laughs> yeah, that's really true. Um, yeah, I watch your videos. <laughs> But yeah, we've never really uh, we're chatted. We're in Central Where Oregon right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's actually How's beautiful. We just uh, did a great hike down to what's called Stillhead Falls, and we had beautiful weather and got some good photography. Nice, nice. nice. So, how are you, Rob? Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. Say was, again. How are you? Oh, great. I said, how are you, Rob? Yeah, <laughs> okay. good, good. I have a little delay here, but I got it. <laughs> That's okay. Yes. That's okay. Good to We're see just everybody. talking about nice to see you. We're just talking about um, actually I was talking earlier. I don't know if you were on. I've been getting all these emails from people who desperately want to kind of live the dream or start RVing and they put stumbling blocks in front of themselves. And yeah. then we were also just discussing the fact that you don't need to have a $250,000 RV to get out on the road and enjoy yourself. And, and I agree it with really all that, but I also, uh, actually our radio show, I'm going to address some of it, but this, I've been getting hit a lot with people saying, well, have you noticed a lot of people have been breaking down and are stuck in towns and things like that? But so you touched on it and I was listening earlier about, mm -hmm. and the RV lady also uh uh, I don't know your first name, so I apologize. Uh, no, that's okay. okay. I, I go by being RV prepared, lady. I'm good with that. Uh, whether it's putting money aside, whether getting a, a blank credit card and just setting mm -hmm. it aside, or being extended, those are the kinds of things yeah. you should not go out in the road without it because uh, you just don't know what's going to happen out here. So, Right. Yeah. Well, you figure with a class A, just to replace <laughs> a tire exactly. can cost you anywhere from six hundred oh, to a thousand. And you know, a lot of it too is uh, preventative maintenance. Um, if a person stays on top of things, you have a tendency to catch things before they actually happen. True. You know, that's a yeah, that's a big thing. And I think that that's a lot of things. I mean, I think preventative maintenance or everything associated with that, people forget that they have to have that done. And then if they have a class A, for example, yeah. they're shocked yeah. at how much it is. <laughs> you know, they're just, are, are you kidding me? And it's, it, it is one of those things that you have to put mm -hmm. into your budget um, for this. And um, this is not a inexpensive no. venture. You know, this is, um, Probably just as much as oh, maybe a little cheaper than a brick and mortar. Yeah, you know? it's just you just have different expenses, you know, than the brick and mortar. You don't have your yeah. land taxes and and landscaping and maintenance of the house, but you all but you do have the maintenance of your RV. You have the travel, you know. You still eat whether you eat out in restaurants or eat at home. Yeah. You know, you have your basics are still the same. It's just you have a different home. Mm -hmm. So your home is, you know, your right. RV has got different expenses. So, Francis, can you hear us? And you get to drive away. Yeah, I, can hear I don't know if she can I, hear us. I turned the volume down so it doesn't reverb back into the speaker. Um, oh, okay. Okay. Please feel free to jump in and speak anytime. No, yeah, well, I'm listening. It's okay. 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 <laughs> I don't have an RV, but so yeah. I'm kind of on a learning curve. If anybody, that's perfectly fine. Perfectly oh. fine. I'm always no, on a learning curve. Yeah, there learn. is. <laughs> you too, huh? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to know. Um, the um, uh, but back to mm -hmm. the maintenance of your vehicle. If you have a tow vehicle, Absolutely. you have to do that too. Yes. Um, yeah. But I mean, just the basic maintenance of your vehicle is probably of your RV is probably going to cost you close to two thousand, maybe three thousand dollars a year. Yeah. You know, and, 
and that's not if you're forking over mm -hmm. for brand new tires or having to replace um, some major something, right. something on right. your vehicle. Um, and and I'm not referring to the water heater <laughs> because, and the furnace because and, and all the other things. That's like and if things break expense. down inside the RV, like a fridge or such, they always seem to be much more expensive than if you were in a house, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, oh yeah, the prices always oh, yeah. seem to be Absolutely. higher. But um, yeah. well, and there is something about mm -hmm. RV pricing that um, when you go to a RV specific, like God forbid you should have to go to <laughs> Camping World. Um, they're oh my God, they're insane. Every Oh, you know what I have time. found, and they're horrible. They treat I have found horrible. when we were putting in things like new taps and any plumbing supplies and such, you don't go to an RV supplier. You hit Home Hardware or Home yeah. Depot or something like that, and you get exactly the same thing for about half the price. Yeah, Home Home Depot's right? our best friend down oh, here. Yeah. I bet. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, I've always tried um, on the Class C, I wanted to replace mm -hmm. the water lines. And so, yeah, I went to Home Depot and bought the water lines. And then, uh, but I did have to order the doodad that you screw the hose mm -hmm. into on the outside. That was after, you know, I uh, tore it off right. with the yellow post. But um, yeah, because that was my water line electricity hookup all of that stuff was back there though i oh, didn't damage good. that stuff it was just <laughs> so how long did you keep your class c it was because now you're in a fifth wheel correct no oh, class i'm in a, a class a. a yeah <clears throat> yeah um i had that i bought it and did a lot of work on it for probably six eight months while i was winding oh, down okay. employment okay. and getting ready stuff and then I was on the roof uh, doing some mm -hmm. inspecting. And uh, long story short, Oops. I fell off the roof and I broke my arm oh. and my shoulder. And so I had to oh, delay trip. Okay. my trip um, until I could reach over my head and wave and you know mm -hmm. be very, very confident in this right. side of my body. Um, you know, because it wasn't like I could say, hey, person that doesn't exist, could you go out and pump the gas or, you know, wave down somebody mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be. Uh, um, unhook the Suzuki. These are all tasks that I had to be able to and do And this myself. is what, you know, everyone and has so, to, like quite often women alone are scared of that, right? But, but there's a lot of men out yeah. there that have to learn all this as well. Oh, Nobody yeah. starts out yes, being knowledgeable about everything. We all no. have to learn. Um, yeah. You know, it doesn't matter who you are. There's always Definitely. something to learn. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's only two things that I won't do on my RV, and that's okay, anything smart. electrical. Because I'm just Challenge? electrically <laughs> unclined. <laughs> Challenged. Um, <laughs> And let's see, and, and I won't do like the heavy work. You know, I'm not going to do the brakes on the RV. I'm not going to do, no, I would do the brakes on the Suzuki, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't do them on the RV. And, um, uh, but, you know, there are things that you have. To, now, what men have as an advantage is that many of them uh, grew up um, with automobiles you know, tinkering and with such. Just tinkering with engines. Yeah. yeah, you know, making a Ford mm -hmm. and all that stuff that, you know. <laughs> so I did, did I. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't I hesitate to at least try. I redid my, um, uh, Frances got bumped off for some reason. You can try again, Frances, just hit the open seat. Um, I, yeah, I redid the roof on my, I full time in my travel trailer for four years. Um, and I redid my roof, I installed an awning, I did whatever needed to be done.
you know, it, the maintenance with yeah. me. <laughs> well, and I figured that you can always call somebody to make the Absolutely. repair for you. So you might as well, and they're not going to charge you anymore because you, mm -hmm. um, you know, try to yourself first. So that has always been my theory. Oh, plumbing. I don't do any plumbing. Um, but that's always been my theory is that, um, you know, try it. And if it works out, then uh, fabulous. If it doesn't work out, you can oh, right. stay a professional. We got somebody. I built playhouses and tree houses, not forts. Hey, that works. <laughs> oh. Same, same. <laughs> same, same. Hammer, nails, whatever. Screws, <laughs> screwdrivers. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I did all that stuff. Carry on. I gotta, I gotta close my and blinds. So, I seem like I'm blind here. Yeah, we got actual sun. We got sunshine um, here too. It's like, oh why? I, I'm keeping the blinds open though. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I do too. But I wasn't being able to see. Actually, where I live, uh, we get a lot of sunshine. Which I'm up quite high in altitude. I still have a foot of snow. <laughs> in front of our place mm -hmm. but um we get beautiful right. sunshine so that kind of makes up for it yeah it's it, and that's important to me i can't be any place where there's no sunshine <laughs> i don't I know how people do it yeah. i don't know how they live in the midwest i traveled for a year for and months. the whole purpose of that year when we were traveling in our bus was in search of sunshine and that was the goal we followed mm -hmm. the sun <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's basically what I do. How long have each of you been on the road? That's from Signs <laughs> Joe. Um, I will be on the road um, full time in my RV. April 11th of 2016 will be a year and for me. Myself, so, personally, nothing. right now I'm in a house, um, but I have full time off and on probably for over 10 years. Um, and my, uh, you weren't on when I stated earlier, I have a big for sale sign in front of my house and the minute it is sold, I am gone and that's it. I'm back in the RV for good. <laughs> How about you, Rob? Yeah. Uh, well, this is our second time uh, in 2006 and seven, we did it for about a year and then, uh, we just finally got back on the road. So we've actually been full timing since September. Good. So, yeah. Good. So you oh, did something okay. similar to me. Okay. 2015. You know, you full time and then go out and then come back. Well, yeah, the yeah. economy kind of kicked us back into the uh, workforce. I think I told you about that. But uh, um, yeah. So the company I was working for, I got to go back and I got my pen, got that add on to the pension I had there. So I just stayed till mm -hmm. 55 and went ahead and got the pension and bailed out of there as soon as I could. <laughs> So uh, good for you. Yeah. So and your uh, wife is still working yeah. too, though, isn't she? She's doing contract work. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, but the type of work she's in accounting, so she's able to do. Uh, she's wanted everywhere we go. <laughs> Put it that way. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. Uh, I'm sure. And Sherry's right across from me I'm too. Sure so I was is. like, all right, if I say something wrong, I'll get the glare. <laughs> <laughs> I think the last time I spoke with you, she was away. Yeah, oh yeah, you had she's back. Her to the air. Yeah, <laughs> she's she back. Uh, now you have to be polite. I have to be good. No, she's. Uh, we're actually doing <laughs> some insurance, uh, uh, health insurance uh, research. So hopefully, in a oh. couple of weeks, we'll have some information to pass on to people. Uh, so Sherry's, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she, Sherry says doing the homework sucks. <laughs> Not fun. <laughs> oh yeah, I would be very interested in learning more um, about that. I not that it would affect us as Canadians, but I have a lot of readers that are from the United States that would be interested in that. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, Technomatia. Yep. I know Definitely. you're familiar with Technomatica. Okay, they they did um, that. Oh, I want to say in mm -hmm. the summer of last year. Yeah, they, uh, right around summer, and they and you might want to ch check and see what they. Yeah, sure. Uh, right now, with. it's kind of been using uh, but, uh, escapers. Um, is where we started, but it doesn't necessarily mean where you'll end up. <laughs> but uh, 
Escapers have got a good source of yeah. here's where you get started, but it's so complex now that you'll you'll there's no one way to do it. So that's all we can tell you so far. <laughs> right. Well, in the United States, your medical yeah. is it not like in Canada? Our medical is done provincially, so every province has got a different medical system. So is that the True. same in the United States for each state? Yeah, it's no. all over the place. No. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> no. Basically, what you do is you pick a company. Yeah. I'm going to try to put you on our speaker. Company, and works. you pay them. So sure, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Um, yeah. The, um, you choose a, a company, and then you pay them, and uh, they you buy whatever what type of coverage you want to buy uh mm -hmm. is, is yeah coverage is basically how it works but it's not the, um, it's not state, i mean it's ridiculous like um uh, you didn't don't have a different insurance for texas versus florida or oregon right okay no. okay no no um now some doctor's offices will not accept um okay. some insurance plans so you do get into oh, that okay. sometimes but if you're with a major carrier it's it's generally not a problem i'm with a major carrier see so our medical is provincial it's the, government uh, run for each province it's not right. private well we have yeah we have obamacare and yeah. i don't know anything about that That's all i hear about it is on the news i don't know anything about it Sherry and I have always been provided through companies, so this is the first time we have. We only need it for a couple of months, and so, but ugh. Oh. it's ugly. It's ugly, yeah. Obamacare? Oh, compared to what oh, we've had, is. you know, I've through companies, even... it's so much, you know, it's a lot easier, but um, yeah. Anyway, but yeah, we'll have we'll know more here in a couple of weeks, I think. I hope, yeah, I've covered my own insurance because I. I basically worked as a contractor um, to a variety of different places. And so I always covered myself and my daughter, um, you know, our insurance. I always did mm -hmm. that and, you know, just picked what I thought. Do you get ex uh, extra travel insurance and, for being out on the road? Um, Is that necessary for you? Uh, okay, not uh, for me. Uh, so I felt funny calling you RV lady. But I, I don't know your first name, but uh, Sherry was asking if do you have any information to pass on that um, addresses multi-state because we travel. Oh, she does too. This is um, I don't know if you met her. Um, yeah, um, I do not. Um, okay. Generally, I get I seek medical care when I'm in California, and then you know I have a primary care physician mm -hmm. and a cardiologist and whatnot. So generally, I'm over in California where I know they take the right. insurance that I have. Now here in Florida, um, I had uh, some difficulty uh when i went to the doctor here i went and had a bunch of blood work because i was due and blah 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 and um you know it's like eight thousand dollars worth of stuff yeah. i'm not paying for that and that's why i have insurance but um you know uh they they took a minute and i said you know do you take the insurance or not because then i have to go shop for somebody who takes my insurance okay. and she goes no we take it okay. and i'm like oh, okay and uh, it might be it might be something that is m more difficult when you're out of your home state. Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, we've heard that too. Uh, all I really care about, yeah, all I really care about is you know what part of this, what part is my copay? See, yeah. our medical <laughs> is recognized <laughs> everywhere. Copay? The only thing is, um, if per se, our medical pays. A hundred dollars for a procedure, and you're in a different province or a state, and the cost is say a thousand dollars, then we have to pay the difference. So our medical only covers what it, they would 
cover here at home. That's right. why we have to, yes. um, if we're traveling outside of our province, whether it's traveling to the States or in Canada, we have our basic medical, but we have to purchase travel medical insurance as well. That makes sense. Yeah. Now, when I leave the country, I have to have travel insurance um, because... I need to be able to get back to the United States in order for right. my insurance. So to you work. would need it. So what that travel yeah. insurance? Yeah, what that travel insurance does is basically get stitch you me home. up, and then <laughs> <you're home>. uh, <laughs> and it, yeah, and if it's and if it's you know really critical, then yeah, right. they, they fly me out, and. Uh, that's covered under my flight insurance. My, um, we have a lot of issues insurance. up here with our travel insurance. Um, if, as an example, we have, of course, Canadians are all down in southern United States in the wintertime, snowbirding. And they all have, I mean, our medical yeah. is extremely expensive, as yours is too. But they get down there and they get sick for whatever reason. And their travel medical won't cover because they may have had a precondition. And if, and if they've oh. had oh, a precondition and they haven't mentioned it, even if that condition was like five years ago, um, then, uh, right. they, then they're not covered. And we're finding a lot of Canadians are running into that situation down huh. when they get, and it has nothing to do with wow. the United States. It has all to do with our travel medical companies up here. Um, right. Well, it was my understanding with Canadian insurance that um, you guys have yes. a cap on stuff. Yes. Your insurance has a cap. And then anything beyond that, the yes. you know patient yeah. is responsible for. And uh, we have that to a certain degree. But, for example, for me, my cap mm -hmm. is very high. And so, um, you know, I can be in the hospital for $5 million <laughs> oh, worth. You. <laughs> you know, tell me what Right. <laughs> and, and, and that's because I do have a heart condition. So, you know, if, if something happens to me, it's going so to be, could you, you know, with you critical. having a precondition, a heart condition, can you get travel insurance? Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. we probably yeah. couldn't. Because I, oh, um, yes, I can get it. Um, Basically, what I have to do is, and I go see a cardiologist every six months, but I have to present the travel insurance oh, with company a, with that right. specific information, so and that's that they probably know what it is here too. And yeah. okay, yeah. Cool. yeah, and so as as long as um, what they don't want to do is get into a pre-existing condition that um, they have right. no warning about. You know, my travel insurance yes. is higher because mm -hmm. of my, okay. So, uh, and I'm just willing to pay that because it's worth it right. to me. Um, you know, peace of mind. To me, it would be true. I so, would too. Yeah. You don't yeah. want to play around with that. Yeah. 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 And eventually, I'll be on Medicare, and that'll scare <laughs> the crap out of me. Um, I'm hoping that I actually don't ever have to be on Medicare. Um, because, okay, it just scares the crap out of me. I just found out recently that you have to pay like monthly for Medicare. I thought oh. it was just free. You know, I thought, I thought you got to a point in your life where now your medication and all your stuff was free. No, it is. You actually had to pay for it. I, had a I and just got a in January and all my medications are free. Zero copay. Really? Oh. Yeah, with Humana out of Kentucky, Lexington, Kentucky. Okay. Well, well, I became, I became disabled in uh, 2009, and then two years later, I had to, I had to take Medicare. So, so huh. I've been well, I've been it, it must be working out for you, years. and it probably. It probably makes a difference that that you're on uh, disability. Yeah, I am disabled. Yeah, yeah I got kicked <laughs> out of the workforce yeah. and everything. So, oh, unfortunate. Yeah. So, well, I took charge of my health. Okay, I stopped eating 
all kinds of stuff. I don't eat out. I don't eat fast food. Uh, dairy free, gluten free, mostly eat rice and vegetables, and I do eat meat and fish. So I just real good for healthy. You. Good for I mean, you. My heart fractions fifty percent. It used to be twenty five. So I'm doing pretty good. Good for you, Francis. Healthy Great. nutrition is the way it is. So. Yeah, unfortunately, well, it gets down to the fact that we all have to look after ourselves. We're responsible for our own health, yeah. you know, it really yeah. does. So, and, yeah, well, and, and new mm -hmm. RVers, you know, may not think of, oh, well, I have to have health insurance. It's going to be accepted wherever I go. And I have to have automobile insurance that is going to cover me in mm -hmm. the event that um, some semi truck runs into me and uh you know i'm gonna need to have accommodations because this is my home right and somebody's gotta right. pay for that and it's gonna be me so um nice to go yeah, that's overload. that is why i have to wear a compression mask and body compressions that's anyway okay. question is it's what okay. ever could my don't worry about it. okay <laughs> okay um uh, yeah, yeah, I thought me it was too. Be fun. <laughs> uh, but uh, people do not, um, you know, when they're getting into our beers, and I find, I think the van dwellers mostly, because they think they're going to get in a van, you know, fix it up, whatever, and then like live in it for free <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> they're in for a shock. I, I really I'm don't grasp I, I got a point yeah. that people uh, believe that still. <laughs> Yeah, I think they do. I think they think they can get into a van and, um, you know, gas is, is is low right now. So, um, <laughs> you know, they, they figure it's all free. And, free, and they free think and they're going to park on oh the side God, of the road you, somewhere on a street oh, in yeah. a city. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, and they're doing it they're in Vancouver in lower mainland of British Columbia. They're doing yep. it. Yeah, yeah, it's become big. It's oh, yeah. huge. Oh, it's here, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. it, it's everywhere. I mean, people look at that as a, an avenue, and they're so misguided. You know, it's um, where are you going to shower? Where are you going to go to the bathroom? Where are you going to this? Where are you going to that? Where are you going to mm -hmm. cook? You know, where are you going to change your clothes? Where are you going to store your clothes? Yes. Do you need a job? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> and, uh, yes. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I keep hearing about these people that are just like, you know, got no job. And well, on YouTube, you run into a great deal of um, <laughs> People who think that they get to do it for free and everybody's willing to bail them out. Well, as soon as they you know, thank you, thank that's, you. True. that's very true. <laughs> I'm trying to be really <laughs> nice. <laughs> there's, um, we're, there's, we're on the same page. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. And yeah. you know what? This has been an hour. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, this has been awesome. Oh. <laughs> oh. Great. I you, see, I do my show for nine years. Hey, I can you keep talking forever. Hold on. No, oh, keep no, going, no, and I'm just going to go no, grab my charger. Hold on. Oh, okay. So, so how <laughs> what's the weather like? Uh, we'll Wait a minute. You're both talking at the same time. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to ask, how's the Florida weather? Crappy. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. El Nino, basically, what's happening is all the rain and wind and whatever is coming over to Florida through Mexico, oh, the El Nino yeah, yeah. thing. If it doesn't go up and hit San Diego, then it's it's coming across Mexico and smacking right into uh, Florida. Oh. And oh, this it's, is it's, what this is what you wet. have to look forward to. <laughs> it's coming your way. <laughs> uh, well, basically, it's like two days out of the week. It's raining, yeah. or they expect rain, or, is or, or. Now, what's nice? What's nice now is that, yeah, we expect rain, but it's eighty degrees. Yeah, are you getting, are you getting a lot of humidity? 
Um, no, not really. I mean, you know, other than when yeah. it's raining, it's not. It's not uh, tropically humid. It does now. get that way though later, and, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Oh yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So will so, you stick around? Um, you know, it's. I am here until the first of April. And then again, I'm going to toss a coin in the air and see where it falls. And uh, well, I had a conversation with my daughter and she is pregnant with her first child, my first grandchild. And so um, she said, basically, this is what she said. It wouldn't be so bad if you came back. <laughs> so is that going to be your first grand grandchild? Oh, nice. Yes. Yeah. And so um, she's very in nice. September and yeah. And I think that um, I may end up going back there, even though I do have plans and reservations. Uh, I have reservations in Ohio for June, but uh, depending on which way the coin goes, I'm going to go that direction. And, and I was just going to do the Eastern seaboard anyway, and, uh, and then cut across and, um, cut across and go into Ohio and then after Ohio then head back to California and I'm kind of putting me putting myself right into tornado <laughs> country uh, during yeah. the worst time and yeah and so I'm thinking well maybe that's not the wisest thing to do um so I may in April head back the deserts are in bloom apparently Death Valley is seeing a um a bloom that they haven't nice. seen in 10 years nice. uh yeah and i'm sure all the local and that's because of el nino and the amount of water yeah. that's been dumped but we're heading um, down there too we're actually okay. heading south even though it's going to start getting warmer we have a grandchild we want to see down in arizona so we're working our way down there so uh nice yeah, those yeah. Are grandkids exactly. <laughs> hey i got five of yeah. them well how oh, sweet we just what, had oh, our we just oh, had our least, I, uh, most recent one on February the fifth. So oh nice, yeah, oh my God. I actually I knew. have five also, um, um, but uh, two yeah. of them we inherited, and then we have two new ones. Ah, <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> no, nice, that's good, nice. The um, well, yeah, the uh, what I did was I promised my daughter a long time ago that uh, because I didn't have the benefit of having my mother with mm -hmm. me um, while I was pregnant and when I had the baby and, you know, all the things that you have to learn. I mean, I brought a baby home from the hospital and I had no idea how the diapers worked. Okay, <laughs> I still don't. It was bad. Where's the front? Where's the back? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Five I just, just did the best I could and hoped it wasn't. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, finally, I had a friend come over and she said, you know, first of all, the, the diaper's on backwards and it's supposed to be way tighter. And, 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 and I was like, oh, no, no, she won't be able to breathe. And um, she goes, no, she'll be able to breathe. It's okay. She obviously um, survived. But... The diaper fail, right? Yeah. She can't breathe. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. Well, then the so, kill you. Um, I made her. You know, yeah, I made her a promise um, that I would come back and be her indentured slave for oh my six God. Oh dear. months. <laughs> but, you know, yes. isn't and that so, what this RVing is all about? That you have the luxury yeah. of being able to say, yeah, I'll come and park in your driveway or whatever for the next six months. Yeah. yeah. That's what it's all yeah. about. Well, I'm not going to park in the driveway, yeah. but yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm my my schedule in my head is that I'm there August 1st for her last month of pregnancy and then the clock starts when the baby's born as to when the six months is because that's, that's when, when she it's said fun. that's when I need you. <laughs> yeah, well that's when she no 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 no. I don't get any baby time. I'm going to be oh. doing the laundry and uh, I'm a slave. <laughs> I'm going to be going to the grocery okay, you, store and you need making no, the no, no. heads and oh, no. cleaning them. Exactly. Who's your manager? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, um, I, but, yeah, I figured that this is probably the greatest Absolutely. gift that That's I can give her. That's very nice. You know, 
besides cash. <laughs> and um, yeah, and so it, it should be interesting. And I just got off the phone with her um, before I dialed mm -hmm. in on your chat. And she told me that in the event that Trump wins, <laughs> Um, she and her husband and her newborn baby are going to move, relocate to the Yucatan in Mexico. Yeah. They, they've already looked at real estate. They've already looked at it. They figure to rent the house and take that revenue and live on it and not have jobs and just Free. be in, you know, Mexico. Yeah. And so I said, well, I'll be going with you. <laughs> and uh, you know we can be in different yeah. provinces yeah. or whatever, but I'm going. Absolutely, I'm going. that sounds yeah, that's too much fun. And Maybe we so, should all join you. She's like, you know, yeah. She says we haven't really ruled out Guatemala. Or Costa Rica. Try Nicaragua. I like and, Nicaragua. Uh, well, I've, really? I've done most of my traveling uh, in Guatemala, um, and I do like Guatemala, yeah. but Nicaragua really uh, appeals to me. That was, yeah. I mean, I, I think what they're looking for is the country that's going to give them the bigger dollar. bang or the biggest bang mm -hmm. for their buck. Yeah. yeah. And so, of course, you know, they want to have a place on the beach and you well, know, blah 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And they think they're going to get it for like three hundred dollars really? a month. And that's going to include all the. You know, uh, if yeah. they do, let me know because um, I'm heading down there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you? No, Where I are said you going? if they could get a place on the beach for three hundred, oh, I'm going. Uh, yeah. Well, what I plan on doing in in uh, in the six months mm -hmm. that I'm, you know, being a slave, I'm going to be researching getting a bunch of people to drive down to the Yucatan. You know, safety and numbers and all that. Um, if, you know. You know basically I'm going to compile. I wouldn't a list even hesitate. And say, oh, okay. I wouldn't even hesitate. I would go. Yeah. To go down there I now? would go. I would prefer to go with three or four rigs. Um, yeah. But yeah. Um, I wouldn't hesitate. I, um, when I went into Mexico, now this was a number of years ago, I led a group of five um, plus us. Yeah. And we went in at Reynosa, Texas followed the uh -huh. gulf down to the yucatan crossed the isthmus right. and came up on the pacific side we now this was yeah. um 15 years ago and i spent three right. you know things have changed a lot yes but they have. you know i yes, never i never encountered any problems ever yeah the um the only drawback that I had, um, or that really made me reconsider whether or not going to the Yucatan was necessarily a good idea, was I don't speak the language. You don't have to. I don't. Not I, there. Well, I don't read yeah. it either. You have to be able to read the signs for, you know, on Where the road. On, you so would you go down the Gulf? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, there's now think there are campgrounds along the way. There's some communities that there aren't oh, any, know. but there's always an yes. airport to park at. Wow! Think about That's that. Well, yeah, I have a I Canadian. Have I have a Canadian yeah. question for you. Okay. You ready? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. the first time we were RVing full time, we ran into a couple that were coming from Toronto. Was it? Yep. Canada from Canada. Okay. And mm -hmm. their mission is we, we ran into them in uh, Las Vegas and they were driving to Belize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Driving to Belize. Okay. But the reason they were doing that is uh, they, uh, because they're Canadian citizens, that that's a commonwealth. And there were some benefits for them going from to Canada to Belize because it was a commonwealth. Do you, what do you know about that? No, no, no. Um, the, the, one of the benefits of going to Belize is they speak English. It's an English speaking well, yeah, country. Yeah. I think it's 80% English speaking. Um, yeah. The, I've, 
channeled all through Belize too. I I don't know whether it, they like Canadians, but I I don't know whether it would be a huge benefit being Canadian. Yeah, no. I don't know. No. But yeah, um, a alive. friend of mine took. He led a group from Canada, or no, United States actually, and they went right down to the Panama in their RVs. Wow. Yeah, and, these guys sold everything they had, bought a trailer mm -hmm. and truck. Yep. Their mission was to go to Belize because he was a contractor and he actually had some work lined up. So when he oh. actually, when they got there, they just sell the truck and get rid of their stuff and go to work yep. for the contractor that was down there already because they, already had arrangements and uh so you had the talent and the skill that they were looking for but, right uh, boy i would have been a little scared about dry I, I never did i mean we became really good friends with them but mm -hmm. we never heard from them after that because you know as soon as they crossed the border their cell phone didn't work anymore and someday when i go to police i gotta look them up and see if they you made have it. To. <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know if they made it so uh, but yeah it seemed like a scary trip but uh police seemed like a really nice place to go um, parts of Belize are very nice. Um, Belize City, I think, is a cesspool. Um, but south of Belize City, is yeah. there's some beautiful areas. There definitely is. Um, yeah, I've crossed all those borders in a bus quite often. Most of those borders, like Belize, Nicaragua, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and all of those, um, it's interesting how you know the differences and Belize there's a lot of Canadians that do go down to Belize um, because it's mainly English speaking and they're they like the foreigners they like the foreign money coming in and you can work down there you can mm. um, and mm. if if they stay down if they move there permanently I believe and it's the same in Costa Rica and Nicaragua too. Um, they're so welcoming to Canadians and Americans too, I believe, that they make it easy for you in terms of medical and. That, I think that was what he was. There was something about the fact that it was really easy for them to come in because they're coming from Canada and coming into a Commonwealth. And right. I think it had to do with less taxes or less. Um, penalties That's or whatever it could be yeah yeah, yeah i thought yeah. it was really interesting like it is um, interesting yeah um, hmm. cool it looks I, like we lost not, the I, rv lady what's that yeah i uh, i don't know I, she's still oh she's oh I'm she's back, here she's I'm listening to okay <laughs> um i have a, believe it or not i have tried to make it to some of your other um hang, hangouts prior to this um mm -hmm. but Every time I do, I either forget or it's like, oh, it's six o'clock. I missed it. <laughs> I do the <laughs> same with RV. I know. No, don't apologize. I do the same with RV Lady. I even subscribe and register <laughs> that I'm going to show up. And yeah. all of a sudden, I look at the clock. Oh, it's six o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it was kind of um, fun because I've never been, I've never actually got to be on a chat with her uh, before. So it was really fun to meet her and, uh, uh, we have a lot in common already. Uh, grandkids. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, was, it was really exactly. nice to get a chance to meet her. So good, yeah, good. I, I'm glad. I, yeah. I usually, like I told you, I only go to a handful of hangouts. So uh, I've always mm -hmm. appreciated. Um, you've always kept it on on target as far as staying RV related. So I really appreciate that. We do our best. Yeah, <laughs> that's the whole great. purpose of this. So thank you yeah. very much. I noticed yeah. your community is growing a little bit since I uh, first met you. So I'm really it's glad growing. to see that. Uh, we yeah, did, me too. We did put a couple of punches in for you um, on RV Talk Radio. Um, Thank when you. When I first met you, I, hopefully that yeah. helped a little bit. And, Probably, uh, I, I would I say also, it did, yeah. And I forwarded you on a couple of our other platforms too that mm -hmm. week. So I, I hope that helped out too. So. Gotta Absolutely. Help each other. Any, uh, that's what it's all about. And that's actually, yeah. oh. you know, that's what the RV industry is about, too. What yeah, you ask. did a presentation on, I can't remember what it was, that was a few weeks ago. Sorry. A lot of videos since then, but you did a presentation I thought was really good. And that was one that we forwarded on one of our 
our main platform on Facebook. And I think, uh, I think that should have helped you out. Um, I thought it was a great one about, I don't remember. It was something before the thousand trails. It was like two or three videos before that. There was one you did. Yeah. I don't remember what it was. Sorry. It's okay. (laughs) It's okay. (laughs) So is this microphone working? Okay. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I still, I can't hear myself now because I don't have my headset on, but, it's like I never know if it's working on this thing very well. <laughs> yeah, my microphone is broken on my camera, so I'm using my iPhone headset. So, can you hear so, me? Okay. Um, yeah, I hear you. Great. Uh, RV lady was oh, saying good. that we should on Sunday. She does her chats, which I um, and <laughs> now I'm gonna ask you a question about that. I always noticed that it seemed to be a um. Women? Uh, is it women? women? Yeah. <laughs> and so I don't know. Let's if ask I, her. I've Let's seen... see what she says. That's what I'm hoping. So I, I've seen her say it's a woman's show. And so I have come in and sat in the text area and, and listened, but I was like always afraid to hop on. <laughs> okay. Here she is for, she it is it's for, for women, women are viewers. <laughs> but, okay, carry but. on. <laughs> see what she says. <laughs> <laughs> but I would I let you button. come on and promote your channels. Okay, Rob, we're really meeting there it. next. <laughs> All right. All right. It's a, it's a date. <laughs> it's a date. We will both be there next Sunday at four o'clock. How's that? <laughs> is that what time it is? Is it on four? Yeah. Her show? Yeah. Four o'clock. Oh, okay. I'm Sunday. pretty sure it is. Remember that. Yeah. Four o'clock our Sunday. time. Because you're on the same time zone that I am. Right. Yeah. Pacific. Yep, yep, yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, well, hey, I, all uh, right. We should wrap her up here because uh, I, I think was, so. <laughs> sure. I, just, I was just going to go on for a little bit. <laughs> I'm glad you joined us. Thank you very much. And Francis, you too. And RV Lady, I'm really glad you joined us too. Thank you. Yeah, and, I'm glad so, I got a chance to talk to her. Yeah. Hey, I got a question. What's the number in the lower right corner of our picture? It's, mine says 16. That's we. Oh. Yours says 22. What does that mean? <laughs> Go ahead, Rob. Explain it. Those are. <laughs> we went through this last time uh, when I was on the <laughs> we show. Did. I said, what are those? Um, those are kind of like uh, little likes. If somebody like um, uh, sees you and they Ooh. just hit the little like buttons, and uh, it, sometimes it's good if you're talking about a subject people really want to hear about, you'll notice your likes go up, and so it, it's Ooh. actually a. I just cool. went back up more. I, I, I think the RV lady is hitting us too, and yeah. we're hitting RV, each other. RV lady being real generous. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, oh, you hey, know I what, a, you guys. I got a scoot. Yeah. I thank you so much for joining us today, everybody. And the one, oh, it's just her. Thank you very much. Um, anyway, thank you, everybody. And we will, if you. Don't see us next Monday. You'll see us before that on Sunday on RV Lady at 4 o'clock Pacific time. <laughs> we got to go terrorize her now. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Thanks a lot, you guys. Have a good week. All right. Thanks. thanks. Bye. Bye now. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.